I think we're live. Hopefully it'll did it show up over there. Sorry if you've uh, if you've joined us and it is stuttering again. Like I don't understand what's going on. I wonder. I'll tell you, it's still on because you're talking, but it's frozen. Okay, so it's frozen right now, and I'm very sorry. And I apologize to all you lovely people out there. Uh, I don't know, we, we were trying to get this other setup going and we were excited about it, but it was not working, like I was saying, the, the, the internet signal was not good, uh, even though we had tested it earlier this week. So basically, now I'm frozen on the screen. Ah, maybe it's finally caught up. Okay, so uh, for those of you who don't know my husband, this is JR. Um, Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> this is totally... <laughs> the setup that we had in mind, but we will go with it. Hey, Clarissa, I'm glad, <laughs> yeah, you are totally on time. We we were technically going to be on time, but it, it just it just did not work out. And now, sorry, let me, let me get this a little bit better. Okay, so, <laughs> but you go with the flow, right? So, um, and my and son Our life, our life always freezes on smiles, and on been and on said, at least it's frozen on smiles. Right, yeah, yeah, that's true. We, we keep smiling. Uh, uh, yes, Christina, he is a very uh, sweet and supportive guy. Um, and so, let's see. Um, so tonight's topic, and I'm frozen again, so I apologize. If, if, if the signal is bad, just bear with me. Uh, hey, Flossie Beach. Um, and hey, Teresa. Uh, so today, and hey, Gabriel. Uh, I think I missed you earlier. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, tonight's topic is about intermittent fasting around people who are not intermittent fasting and just basically how to deal with that, especially when it comes to uh, in a marriage or in a relationship, um, different things that you might come up against. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to, the one big thing I want to point out is it can feel sometimes like sabotage. If you are new, especially to intermittent fasting, you're just trying to figure all this stuff out, and then somebody, like maybe it's your, your spouse or something, uh, they encourage you to eat. They're like, oh, you know, like, I, I feel bad, you know, why don't you eat with me, and things like that. And it can feel like sabotage, but I would encourage you to remember, you're on the same team, you know. They want you to succeed. A lot of times, they don't even know what's going on. For example, uh, and this just kind of blew my mind, uh, about when did he really notice that I was doing intermittent fasting? And, and we, when he was telling me when it was, it was actually after I had lost like, uh, like the, the, uh, the, addition, the original like 65 pounds. So I had already lost that weight and maintained that he really said I didn't really know what you were doing uh oh uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> hold on it's still going wait the the thing is still your going? app crashed but the I think we're back I am so sorry you guys okay hey John um okay so back to what okay so basically he was telling me like he didn't really even understand that I was intermittent fasting until a time uh, that I started the YouTube channel. So that was after I had already. Is it still going? It's okay, still okay, going. okay. <laughs> um, after I had already started this channel, which meant I had lost 65 pounds at that point, and I had maintained it for almost a year before he really understood what I was doing. So it just didn't really come up uh, when he was, uh, when I was losing the weight, he was uh, working a lot and our schedules were very different because he was a realtor. So, uh, you know, eating that, like, especially, you know, when he was uh, just eating basically that one meal with us, anyway, it just didn't come up. Same with my kids. They really didn't know until about the time I started this channel. Uh, so, uh, which goes back to um, spotlight syndrome right? We think like everybody is just like so focused on what we're doing. And then as it turns out, everybody's pretty much ignoring us. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, now some people have a different kind of situation, which is, um, 
maybe, you know, the person that you're in a relationship with is also overweight. And one thing I would encourage you, because sometimes that can feel like, um, uh, you know, I wish they would do it with me too. And I would encourage you to, to maybe just let them kind of find it on their own time. Because um, in the past, I have had well-meaning people who would say like, oh, come be on a diet with me. Or, you know, like, uh, let's go on a diet, like the two of us. And I really disliked that. I really always just, uh, even though the people had the best of intentions, I really disliked that. Um, so, uh, just kind of let them find it on their own time. Because I think what you'll find is if you're having good results and you're feeling great, and if, if, and if you just, you know, kind of let them just watch what you're doing, they'll probably want to get on board after they see that you are having results and that you're, you know, enjoying your time doing this. Um, so, on that, am I still frozen? But Your the audio... video is frozen, but I still hear the audio. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so a couple of things I thought, uh, but see, now, okay, so that's not my situation. It's very thin and has always been very thin and has never, ever had to deal with weight loss or anything like that. So, uh, so it's been a little bit different for us, uh, because he's a skinny guy. And so how, how does that work? You know, because he doesn't need to intermittent fast. He's not a good faster. Would you say that's fair? That I'm no. not a good faster? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's, you know, he tries, he has tried sometimes cause he wants to kind of, he sees how good I feel doing it. And so he thinks, you know, I want the mental clarity, but I'm also five years older. So, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, so he wants, uh, that kind of thing, um, uh, out of it, but he, but again, he just doesn't practice it on a consistent basis. So, uh, one thing I was asking him was, was it hard for him, uh, when I, when he finally realized like what I was doing, was that difficult? And what did you say? Sorry, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was here. I have it delayed in my ear. Okay. So ask me again. <laughs> I, I said, was that hard for you? Like, when when you realize, like, okay, she's fasting and she's not eating with me, was that difficult? Uh, not necessarily the fact that you weren't eating with me, but it was difficult for me to eat with you not eating. Like, it wasn't like I felt like I missed your presence. Right. I just felt bad that I got to eat and you didn't. Okay, right, right. Okay, and so um, one way we kind of handled that was I would just have coffee, and I kind of would plan my coffees around the, the normal meal times for him. So, like, he would uh, have breakfast, and I might sit there with a cup of coffee, or we would, instead of that, because at first he you felt kind of uncomfortable sometimes because I would say, oh, man, that smells yeah. so good. Not, not just say it. You would put your nose <laughs> in my plate. <sighs> I would do that, but only really just to kind of mess with his head. <laughs> that was really all it was. Um, because I wanted him to laugh. I wanted him to realize, like, this is, this is really easy. Um, so he, uh, so what we would do a lot of times is maybe he would eat, you know, like uh, his breakfast or whatever at the table. And then we would have coffee mm -hmm. together, um, which was uh, good. And then another thing was, are, were you ever concerned with my health? Like when you realize, like, oh, you're not eating breakfast and lunch. No, I never noticed anything that seemed bad. Like you didn't seem unhealthy or, or weak or anything like that. So I just thought she's smart. She knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's something that you could definitely discuss. You know, like if it's one of those things. If or whatever is saying like oh well you need to uh, eat more or you know I'm, I'm worried about you they're, they're just concerned and and if you can show them you know research about intermittent fasting and things like that I think that would go a long way uh, to, to help uh, improve uh, their kind of mental state and uh, and and then this was very interesting to me I asked him when did you notice my weight loss and you said that uh, it was basically after you started the channel. <laughs> so, again, 65 pounds. And what did you also say, which I thought was really sweet? Uh, you mean what I said a long time ago? Well, yeah, well, yeah. About how as long as you were able to play with the kids. Yeah, and well, and I'm happy if you're happy. Yeah, and basically he said, you know, like 
he always just saw me as me. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really sweet. Like, I think women especially, and, and this may be true for guys too, but I'm not a guy. So, um, we kind of like obsess, like, oh, he's focused on every pound that I put on. And really they just see us, you know, as, as people. So, um, the picture that we were going to share, <laughs> but we can't right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't, I didn't remember her that way. Mm-hmm. Even the picture that is on the website and all of that. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that way. Yeah. So there you go. So something to realize, you know, uh, it's maybe not as as big of a deal to them. And that's not to say that if it's a big deal to you, then do something about it and, and feel good about yourself. I think that's very important. But don't be too worried about about them and what they're thinking about because odds are they're you know they're probably just not even really thinking about it. And be very careful because <laughs> I I know I would do this too. Uh, when, when I was overweight, I would, sometimes I would say something to kind of elicit a response from him. And it was like, really, he had no way of winning. Uh, the, the way I would phrase something, you know, kind of made it like, if, if he were to say, oh no, I would know that's wrong because obviously I've gained weight. But if he were to agree, then it would be like, I can't believe that you said that or, or, or that you would think that. So just be careful with how you phrase things or, or questions you ask. Uh, you know, never, never ask a question you don't really want to know the answer to, I guess is the right way to put it. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, so let's see, uh, Kim, you said messing with my husband's head is in my wifely, in the wifely purview. Isn't that so true? I just, I really, I've found, I still find it funny because I will still do that. And it really does bug him sometimes because <laughs> sometimes food does really smell good. Um, Flossie, you said uh, you recently started OMAD. I get super hungry, so when I eat, I feel like a binge, and you're not sure how much to have. Okay, so that's a really common thing, especially if you go from, say, eating, you know, uh, a kind of a regular schedule, and then you go straight to OMAD. Uh, although, I will say, even though I went really gradually to OMAD, when I made that leap from like a 24 to OMAD, that it was a process. It was a learning process of figuring out, you know, how much do I really need to eat right now? Uh, I don't want to overeat, but I want to eat enough so that I'm not hungry the next day. And so it took a while. Uh, the big things for me were never beating myself up. If if it, if it turned out like, Oh, you know, you really ate too much, (laughs) you know, like, uh, I wouldn't, guilt, you know, feel guilty or anything. I'd just say, okay, I'm just learning right now. I'm just learning how much to eat. Um, but as far as that kind of, uh, uh, binging, you know, you know, cause you're so hungry that like, kind of like, if you're feeling just overwhelmingly hungry and you find it hard to just, you know, like control yourself, uh, it really helps me to try to take a few seconds, you know, just, just, just a few seconds, uh, to think about the food before I start eating and, and to just kind of remind myself, say, okay, you know, take a breath. Like one thing I'll do is I'll, a lot of times I'll go to the bathroom real quick before, like i like if the table's being set and stuff, I'm like, okay, uh, I'm feeling kind of, ha- you know, harried right now because most of the time I've been cooking, you know, lots of different things and getting everything set. And so you kind of can come to the table, like, in this kind of frenzy, right? And, and so then add to that, you're really and leachy, you just, you know, you're, you're just shoveling it in as fast as you can. What helps me is to say, okay, you know, I'll tell the kids like, okay, get, get the table set and I'll just run to the bathroom just to go pee, you know? And it helps just to say, like, it gives me that, that kind of a little break. And then when I get back into the, you know, uh, to the table, uh, one, another thing is we pray, we're Christian, so we'll sit there and, and say the blessing. And as we're saying the blessing, you know, I really am thinking about, okay, I'm, I'm really grateful for this food. Uh, there are people out there who do not have food, so I'm, I'm really grateful for this. And, um, and I want to treat it as such that, you know, this is something to be really enjoyed. Um, and so that's, that's how I approach it. So, um... Uh, and, and that has helped me over time to slow down. And, and then also just as I'm eating, really 
constantly kind of reminding myself, like, slow down. There's no rush. You know, just slow down. And, and especially, like, tonight's live, that, that was an example of we were kind of in a rush. And so I did end up, like, feeling like, okay, I'm eating a little too fast right now. But that's okay. I don't beat myself up. Like, oh, well, I ate a little too fast. No big deal, right? Um, beating yourself up is the worst thing to do. Just, just you know, learn from it. What, whatever, if you ever feel like you kind of slip up with anything with weight loss or anything, I would say, just say, okay, I'm just going to learn from it. Because then you, then it's a valuable experience, right? Um, and so, uh, let's see. So hopefully, uh, Flossie, that, that helps you. Um, and I will say, it is just a process. Like I said, I'm still learning how to always slow down. I, I, I tend to be a quick eater anyway, but I am slowing down. And so that it is a process. Let's see, the homeschool kid. Yes, husbands just want us to be happy. Yes. Uh, even though my husband never focused on my weight, he loves it now that I'm much happier and confident after I've lost weight. And that is so true. I think that is the big thing about weight loss. A lot of it is the confidence boost that we get. It's not so much that, like, before we didn't look good, you know, and after we look good. It is that confidence that really can come about because we feel good about ourselves and about our bodies and like being able to move in our body the way we want to move. So uh, I think that's a great, great point. Um, so uh, is that Ezra or Elizabeth? <laughs> Ezra, please don't be on there. Okay. But uh, my, my son asked, has there ever been a time when you didn't want to fast? And uh, but I think that is a, a good question. So I'll take it. Um, and I, whenever there's a time where I don't want to fast, like, for example, if we have a family event or, you know, especially during the holidays, there are going to be, you know, Christmas time things that we do, and I will take those off on purpose, um, I'm always in control and I'm always intentional about when I take, a, you know, a day off or, or, you know, because those things come up. I don't generally want to take the day off just for no reason. It's always... Uh, tied usually to like an event or something because I prefer uh, because I have the cheat day every week too like if I didn't take a cheat day then I probably would have I would want to take sporadic days off more often but since I have that day off every week anyway I don't ever really have you know like oh I really want to take the day off so okay uh, Clarissa I swapped over from from 186 to 24 and uh, uh, let's see yeah and that uh, I found that I had, uh, that I actually liked the 24, 24 window. It was just one of those things. Once I find, once I got to Oma, I was like, oh, I like this even better because <laughs> it's just like one meal and I'm done. Uh, tink, tink. My husband, uh, good to see you in here, Tink. Uh, my husband doesn't care about my weight, but if I bug him about uh, losing, he's like, either lose weight or don't. <laughs> just stop talking about it and do it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, it, it I think it really is a bigger deal in our own minds, and that's why we get such in a rush, like, oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta get this, all this weight off really fast, but it can be just a slow and steady process, and guess what, like, if you just make it easy on yourself, and you're just, you enjoy your plan, and you're happy about it, and you're losing weight, even if it's gradual, you're gonna be in a better mood, <laughs> and because if you're in a hurry, you're gonna be in a bad mood a lot, uh, but if you just take your time with it, uh, you'll find that, I think, you'll enjoy it a lot more and the people around you will uh, also. Uh, Clarissa, my main issue is not overeating in the shorter eating window. I'm giving myself a few weeks to settle, not binging, but definitely eating. And again, yeah, that's a, just a process. I think you'll find that sweet spot. And here's the thing, different foods are going to do that too. Like, um, if you, if you introduce some sort of like new dish that maybe you haven't done this like 24 on, uh, you might find that it's like, oh man, I, I feel like I overate at the time. Like for example, for me, beans and rice, I'm still trying to figure that one out because it's a very filling meal. But then like the next day I can feel hunger if I don't eat it enough. So there is this kind of like almost like, oh, I feel almost too full, but in order to feel full the, the rest of the day, the next day without feeling too much hunger, then uh, it's all, it almost feels like overeating. I'm still tweaking that one a little bit, but um, uh, be, yeah, I think beans are just a tricky one because they have so much fiber. But um, but you'll you'll find it, and again, you know, it's just 
watching, you know, watching what the scale's doing and watching how you're feeling and all that stuff. And, and some people, uh, just to go back to the 18.6 versus the 24 versus OMAD, a lot of people have really good results on 18.6 and, and some people have really good results on OMAD. And when I looked at my numbers, I was losing about a pound a week um, on, uh, on all of those. So um, I really thought OMAD would make me lose faster and it really didn't. Now, people might point out like, well, it might be that, you know, I, I would have gotten to a certain point on 18.6 and just couldn't lose any more. That might have happened. I don't know. Um, but anyway, just my two cents. Uh, let's see. So, Kim, my struggle lately has been with pain from surgery. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. And pain from your dog dying. I've let myself be a little lax, but I know it's just a momentary thing. I'll be back on track soon, so no guilt. That's so good. That's such a... Such a healthy and self-loving um, uh, attitude to take with it. So I think that's so good and I'm glad you shared that because during during times like sickness or you know grieving or um, you know or, or like an actual like surgery your body you know you need to take it easy on yourself like take it easy physically and and you know also mentally just like give yourself a little bit of you know and you're not getting too far off track or anything and just not feeling guilty that's really good um okay so carlene uh, i was amazed how well if worked he's joined in with me oh that is so good he uh is 63 he was at 280 now uh he's down to 255 and he feels so much better now that is so great congratulations to your husband first of all um and I'm wondering, do, uh, if you don't mind sharing, like how long were you doing it before he kind of wanted to join in? Just because, you know, other people might be out there in that same kind of situation where they're like, well, I know he needs to lose, but, you know, like, like how long did it take? And, and, and also, if you don't mind, like, did you experience any of that kind of thing? Like uh, where, you know, he maybe didn't like what you were doing? You can. Uh, Gabriel, uh, 2 one 2018. Okay, so that was, you were at 237, and today, so you've lost eight pounds. That is awesome, Gabriel. Congratulations. And that's, uh, so yeah, that was really quick. I wonder what your, um, like, what your plan is. Are you doing OMAD? Uh, if you want to share it. If you don't, that's okay, too. Uh, homeschool kid. Because my weight loss is very noticeable now, uh, I've had someone start OMAD. And information I gave her. I wonder if she will stick with it. Do you ever feel a uh, disappointment uh, when people don't stick with OMAD after they've been <laughs> inspired by you? Well, um, I'm trying to think if I've actually had someone say like, uh, I, you know, I have, I can't think of a specific example. I've, I have seen some people struggle with consistency um, and that's hard for me to watch because um, because I want people to make it easy on themselves. But what I see a lot of times is people make it harder. Um, and and so that's hard for me because I can't, I, you know, I can't boss people around. I can, I can only say, here's what worked for me. Um, and um, that is hard. When, when I see people making it harder than it has to be on themselves and then, and then they get frustrated because they're like going off plan and getting back on plan. And then it's like, if, if you could just, you know, slow down and, and just and that I think that's the main thing is it can be frustrating to see people try to go too fast and because I was there like that was my problem in 2015 especially I was just in such a rush to try to get all the weight off really really fast and I had very poor results <laughs> and then when I finally just made it really easy and it just got very very consistent and I, and I said okay it's going to take a long time but I'm going to get this weight off that's when it really started coming off consistently and I had the best success so um so that I would say that's the hardest part um uh but and, and ultimately also um I have to realize like what people do you know with their lives it's none of my business really you know um and I can I can sit here and I can you know share my experiences but ultimately they have to make the decision and they have to you know choose because it's a choice and but you know if, if somebody's not ready to really lose the weight then you know there's not much you can do about that so uh 
and that comes down to boundaries too like let people live their own lives and uh and just you know and and don't try to interfere too much i mean my kind of personal take on that is if somebody comes to me and asks me for advice then i will give it to them but otherwise i mean i'll sit here and share my experiences all night long but uh you know that I, their boundary is, you know, I'm not going to overstep that boundary and say, hey, you know, if you would just, if you just do it this way, you would be better off. So, um, so Gabriel, so you're going to start OMAD, uh, uh, in 2019. So you're not doing OMAD yet. Uh, Tink, that's true. I feel like I, uh, it's taking too long. I'm getting patience though. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's good that you're, oh, patience, patience is like, I still work on patients. Like it, it is my what? What's the Achilles, Achilles? Achilles heel? There we go. I I'm much better than I was. Would you say? Yes. <laughs> and I appreciate it. <laughs> but I'm still very much a work in progress. Um, it is. Uh, it just it ta <laughs> patience. Like building patience takes patience. Uh, but it it you'll get there uh and i think it's just i try to focus on those little victories those those times where i'm like okay normally i would have been really impatient right now but i can feel myself being patient and uh, you know or or if i find myself kind of snapping and being impatient i just i try to immediately back down and say you know apologize if it, if it was uh, to somebody or if it's you know just kind of an, an internal thing i catch myself and i say okay you're not going to be impatient let's Calm down, slow down. Uh, uh, no hurry, no pause. That's one th a thing that I say. Or slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That's the other phrase I say a lot in my head. Um, Madison, you asked, will you continue to do OMAD even as you're in maintenance? Very interesting question because I decided, um, now I can't remember if it was the beginning of November, I think. Yeah, the beginning of November, I decided, okay, I'm going to maintain now. Because um, uh, I really, I'm down at a weight that I really feel good at. I feel like this will be easy to maintain at. Um, and so I really have given myself permission, like just me personally, to just eat, you know, whatever kind of schedule I want. Like I've told myself, like, if you want to do two meals a day, you can. Like if you want to do 18-6, or if you want to add in an additional cheat day, or if you want to do OMAD whatever you want to do. Like I'm, I'm giving myself freedom here, but I just find, I really like OMAD. Like, uh, I, we've eaten popcorn, uh, a good bit at like, like after supper. Um, so I'm pretty much at OMAD that, but, uh, sometimes with popcorn afterwards. Like, so it's, I mean, it would still probably be in most cases like a the yeah, that that window would maybe be a couple of hours maybe three maybe three hours yeah. I don't know like I don't watch the clock I'm not <laughs> I kind of lose track of time but um yeah I would say I would say about that so um uh so that's what I've been doing uh and, and then I also did my my five day fast during during this maintenance mode time um and so I so I I dropped weight from it, but then it, it has bubbled back up to about where it was. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. But, uh, I, I really thought I would want to eat, you know, m like more in a, when I gave myself that freedom again, cause you know, like after I started maintaining the first time, uh, I did, I did a lot of different things to just kind of experiment and see like how easy or how hard is it going to be to maintain. I found it so easy and so forgiving. Like, you know, I was not really consistent with like, okay, I'm doing a certain, uh, fast, you know, for a certain kind of like 18, six every single day. Sometimes it would be like, I'll do OMAD. And then other days it was like, I'll do a 18, six. And then other times it'd be like, I'm going to have snacks and, you know, um, uh, supper. Um, and it was really loosey goosey and I liked that. But then this time I'm just so used to eating oh man, I just enjoy it. So um I really love how it fits in with my day <laughs> mainly. Like I love being able to I mean I wake up and have coffee. I was never really a big breakfast person as far as being really hungry at breakfast anyway. I just did it because I felt like you're supposed to eat breakfast. And then um and then by lunchtime I'm ready for coffee again. So 
that kind of fills me up. So yeah, I'm still basically, I would say, oh mad is what I do. Uh, so, uh, but the good thing about that is like, uh, with maintenance, I found you can be pretty loosey goosey. Um, I would, I would suggest, uh, continue to weigh every day. Like once you get down to the, t the weight you want to be, continue to weigh and then kind of play around with your windows and stuff. Like if it's a thing where you're like, well, I want to be able to have two meals a day or whatever, or three, or three, you know, just continue to track. Uh, I would say continue to weigh every day. That's what I do. And, uh, give yourself like a five pound leeway. Uh, okay. Frugal Smith. Hey, I'm glad you came to the live. Um, uh, Consistency, yeah, it's it's hard. Um, Christina, I know this question is off the uh, subject. Uh, just me being a mother myself, how do you do these videos with three children? <laughs> My children will be interrupting me constantly. I threaten them. No, uh, I don't do Normally that. Normally, I'm a gatekeeper. Yeah, usually, there. yeah, usually he is in uh, like the kitchen slash living room area of our RV, and so he's like the gatekeeper. But tonight, uh, we were trying to do something with, like, OBS uh, Studio and everything, so it was going to be, you know, uh, better because we could have graphics and stuff. But um, uh, I just, you know, I, I, I try, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm about to say all this and then they'll come interrupt me or something, but um, I just sat them down and said, okay, I'm going to be doing a live and I need you guys to you know, be quiet and, uh, don't interrupt unless there's, you know, like something that you need, really need to tell me, like, you know, if somebody is hurt or something like that. So, so far, so good. Well, Ezra did come and laugh. Into the oh yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if you heard. Oldest. Yeah. Our, our oldest, the one that's supposed to be in there, uh, being, uh, kind of, you know, responsible. He's 12. So, uh, but he was watching the video and you probably saw him commenting in the video. And then he also laughed right there at the door so or you know whatever he's <laughs> the you know you know kids so okay so Carlene you were doing it for five months before he joined in and it only took him three months for him to lose weight that is great though uh men can really drop the pounds can't they <laughs> it's so not fair not not all not all men are like that I've, I've learned that by you know some of these interviews that I've been doing uh you know they lose, you know, about a pound or two a week, uh, like a lot of us ladies do. So, um, hey, Topeka, how are you? Glad you're here. Um, yeah, and frugal, staying in maintenance for the month of December, I think is a fantastic plan. Like, just say, you know, I'm just, I'm just maintaining <laughs> right now. Um, I think that's a great goal. Uh, some people try to put like too much pressure like they have all the pressure from the actual christmas thing going on or um and then on top of that they've got the the stress of trying to you know they're going to parties and stuff and trying to maybe avoid those foods or something and it can just be a really stressful time so i think giving yourself some like okay i'm just gonna be in maintenance mode this month i think that's a great goal um sometimes i gain a couple. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now <laughs> because because I, I do. I take a lot of days off during, uh, during Christmas. Th this year so far has not been as uh, much because we're, we're out in Arizona. We're not around people um, that we know or anything. So there's not as many like Christmas parties and all that. So uh, <laughs> yeah, Carlene, it's just not fair. Um, let's see. I certainly... Uh, kid. I certainly agree. I don't advise uh, unless people ask. It's just emotionally hard for me to watch when they aren't consistent and have lots of excuses. Yes, I want them to succeed. It is it is so hard to watch somebody and you know what they're saying is an excuse. And you want to say, right, like, that's just an excuse. But here's what I would say. They know that it's just an excuse. I think deep down. Um, and they've ultimately got to be ready. Like, um, it, it's the same thing, like people who you see, you know, who are maybe in debt or, you know, uh, and you, like, uh, and maybe like if you're a Dave Ramsey fan, you want to say like, look, you can get out of debt. Well, if they don't want to be out of debt, they're not going to get out of debt. Like people have to have, and Dave talks about, if you're a Dave Ramsey fan, you hear this a lot, like he'll say, you know, everybody has to get to that. I've had enough moment where you where you really will start to make 
meaningful change. And I think the same thing happens with a lot of us with, with weight loss. Like that was, that's why I always ask that question in the interviews. Like, is there a specific instance where it was like, okay, I, I've got to do something about the weight. And uh, for me, it was uh, when that picture on Facebook got posted um, and I just didn't recognize myself. But um, uh, before that, I knew that I was overweight. I knew that I, you know, needed to lose weight, but, uh, but it was that kind of that moment. That was my, I've had enough moment. So, uh, let's see. Uh, but just keep setting the good example. I think this is the main thing. TR LaFrance. Hey Kayla, uh, did you ever fall back? Like have days you do two meals a day? I think what you're, I, I think what you're asking is, do I ever just kind of, uh, fall off the wagon <laughs> maybe I, I think that's what you're saying um uh or or you might you might just be asking like do i ever just pull it back and just do two meals a day just because i want to no i i mean i i'm trying to think uh it I, because like certainly now i just don't just because i'm i'm so used to it that it, it's not even a thing but I'll, I'll give you some examples of times where i um i would I would say I would have pulled back some, like, for example, um, when I was a less experienced faster, so I was still losing weight, um, but there would be times where uh, I would be, uh, you know, like right, right before my period or something, I would open my window up earlier, like I'm, you know, whereas maybe I would try, to, I was, perhaps I was trying to be at like a 18.6, I would pull it back to like a 14.10 or something like that. Um, and I always tried to listen to my body. I always tried to take it very slowly in the first place so that it never felt too hard. But there were occasions where, uh, you know, it was always the period, I really think. And then I, and then I also take thing, think, you know, like events and things off anyway. So like if, we, if we have a, a family lunch with, with some of his, some of his family was usually the situation when we lived in Florida. I would just eat like so there would be lots of days where it, I would just eat just because that you know they're eating um, I always did that with intention it was a part of what I call my code so like I just came up with a set of rules for myself so that when these things would pop up I, I've already made the decision like and my decision is always just to eat so like um, you know like if it's a thing where there's an event or another one of my rules is if my kids uh, make something special and they say hey mom well, you know would you like one of these I will I will eat that um, uh, just business lunches things like that and what I always said to myself is if at any time it looks like I'm starting to gain weight because this code is trying to ma is making me go off too often and it's affecting my results I'll change my code but so far I've never had to do that so um, and I think because I had that code, it kept it feeling very, very easy. Like, so that it kind of worked even more days in because I have my cheat day every Sunday. And then, then there are all these other kind of random times, uh, where I would, you know, have a, you know, an extra meal, uh, or whatever. And so, uh, hopefully, hopefully that answers your question. Hey, Vicki, glad you're here. Uh, Kim, I'm not at goal, quite a way to go, but I imagine I will always do at least 16 hours fasted since I know I just feel better when I do that. If I, uh, if I didn't just stick with them and yeah, I, and I, I agree with that, that the idea of 16 hours, um, I think that's, that's certainly something that I could see like always at least that, um, like right now I, I really like the way I'm doing it, but I can imagine that if my life were different, you know, like right now my life is, is one way, but if my life was totally different, it might make a lot more sense for me to do something like a 16, eight, you know, like what if, what if my life was somehow where I had a lot of business lunches? Well, then it would make a lot more sense to do two meals a day probably than one meal a day. Not that I'm planning on having a lot of business lunches, but you never know. Right. So, Madison's coming up uh, there. Me, uh, can you read oh. it? She says, John Piper talks a lot about the benefits of fasting for other reasons besides weight loss. Do you feel like fasting has helped you grow in other ways besides weight loss? Definitely. Um, 
the big one one big thing I think uh, that it taught me was how much uh, food I had let food become this huge part of my life and um, uh, and I had really started to let it kind of rule my emotions I didn't have a lot of control around it um, and it was just it, a lot of times eating was the most exciting thing I did all day um, and when I like and so when I started fasting I started realizing like my life I had I you know like it was kind of there were a lot of parts that were kind of empty like I had I had let food kind of take the place of of other things that I that I shouldn't let it take the place of um, there are lots of other things that I really enjoy doing that I just kind of stopped doing and I was eating a lot instead so um, spiritually I think it has really shown me a lot of things um, especially about you know how important I had let food become that was eye-opening to me and certainly after doing a five-day fast it's like even more eye-opening like wow that you know before <laughs> like if I didn't get my breakfast right like if I was eat, if I was used to eating breakfast let's say at like seven and, and I had to wait until 10 o'clock to eat man I was ill as a hornet and you know like why like I just let it rule my emotions um, and I would eat my emotions and, and so uh, learning about that uh, and, and learning how to fast and then like it's back in its proper place. I really enjoy food now. I really, I, I enjoy the taste of it. I enjoy the fellowship that comes as a part of, you know, sitting down and sharing a meal with somebody. And there's one of my children <laughs> who just popped in the room. Um, but, um, <laughs> something's driving them crazy right now. So Ezra, Ezra's driving them crazy. So, um, but the five-day fast really gave me um, perspective um, on a lot of things. Um, I did it in part for spiritual reasons, too. I, I, I mean, it was mostly for cancer prevention benefits. Um, but uh, really, the, the spiritual aspect for me was, you know, there, like, for example, Jez as well, um, it still hasn't been successful yet. It, like, they haven't been able to find water. Um, and that was really bothering me. Um, and... Uh, and I really wanted to think of, think on that, and and, um, and what you know. So fasting showed me a lot of things about that, um, but then also just it showed me like, uh, you know, you can live on a lot less <laughs> than maybe even what you think. Um, and so yeah, there there's just there's a lot of good I think, and I think fasting teaches you a lot about yourself um, too. So hopefully I answered that question. So. Um, okay, uh, let's see, someone said I gained 50 pounds since you moved to the U.S., that doesn't matter, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, we have a lot of access, a lot of easy access to foods, I would say, especially, like, with the drive through um, and lots of snacks, and, you know, it can, it can certainly be a, um, I think just constant access to food is, you know, can really make someone gain weight, I think, um, Let's see, Gabriel. Oh, so Gabriel, you're doing two meals a day uh, and two gallons. Oh, wow, two gallons of water. Goodness gracious. I, I don't drink nearly that much water every day. People are asking me all the time, like, how much water I drink. I just, I drink when I'm thirsty. That's pretty much it. Um, frugal, thanks for the encouragement. My husband and I are also in the middle of moving to Fort Benning. Oh, cool. And you live in Arizona. Oh, we have to be there by next week. I love uh, your take uh, on easy. This has helped. Well, I'm so glad that it's helped. And we're in Arizona right now. And I used to live in Georgia. or That's where I was born and raised in um, northeast Georgia, Alto. Um, but good luck with your move. And it, that is a stressful time. Uh, uh, are the, is your husband in the Army, I wonder? Uh, uh, anyway, if he is, thank him for his service for me. Um, and okay let's see uh uh nuxa i lost 40 pounds in six months doing if and keto but then you plateaued i switched to omad and didn't have enough patience to persist uh gained you've gained 25 of the original 40 gonna get back on the horse and ride that's good just you know that's the thing just if if you find you've gotten off track just get right back on track you know and make the plan easy again like i feel like an easy plan even if it's a slower plan is much easier to get back on to. Um, I've never had a problem getting back on this plane. Now, every other diet plan I ever did in my entire life, I would get off of it and I would 
never get back on. I mean, there, there were probably a few that I would go off and on, you know, you, you kind of forget how miserable they are. And then you get back on, it's like, oh, right, I hate this thing. Um, but uh, with this plan, it's just like, it, because I've gone on vacations, come back from vacation, got right back on plan. There were no, there wasn't like a long period of time where I was like, oh, got to get back on it. It's just like the day we come back, I'm back on plan. Um, and it's been so, because it's so easy, because I made the plan like so easy. There's, there's a cheat day every single day of, or if not every single day of the week, every single week. Um, I never have taken away cheat day ever, ever, ever. And so, uh, it just makes it super simple. It's like, I've, I'm always, I can at least, even if, even if it seems like, oh man, got to get back to it tomorrow. It's like, but yeah, but on Sunday, I'm going to have a free day. Um, so it just makes it really easy. So, um, so yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're getting back on plan, Nuxa. Uh, Flossie, did you think you'd, uh, get to the weight you are now, or did you take it day by day? I took it day by day. Um, I will say this though. I remember when I was 222 pounds and, um, I wrote down that I wanted to be 142 pounds and, uh, I really, at, at that time, I remember I was in the gym and I had just weighed and I was setting my goal, like, what do I want my goal weight to be? And I put 142. And I remember thinking at the time, like, I, like that's 80 pounds. Like, I, I, I really don't know. I, that's probably not realistic. And, um, and I just, I really, I, it, in that mindset that I was at, it just felt like I can't do this, but I was just bound and determined <laughs> to, to try and I'm really stubborn. So that served me well, but, um, uh, but that was in 2015. Okay. okay. So 2015 was a year where I was not consistent though. I was in a huge rush. And so, uh, it, even though it felt overwhelming, I thought, well, I've just got to lose five pounds a week and I'll just be done really quick. <laughs> and that, totally did not happen. Um, when I finally, in January 2016, that's when I said, okay, forget that. It, it's going to take a really, really long time. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever get to the goal, but I'm going to take it one pound at a time. And when I started focusing on just one pound at a time, that's when I had results. When I just said every day I'm going to be consistent. I'm not going to go off plan all the time. I'm just going to have a plan. And, you know, I wrote down my plan and I it. Um, and so, uh, I got down to 157. And so, uh, when I got down to 157, I was actually very, very happy at that point. And it was coming up on the holidays and I thought, you know what? I don't even know if I can maintain this. So let's see how maintenance goes for a while. And so I maintained there very happily, um, for until September of 2017. And at that point, I wanted to share with YouTube, like, what I'd been doing because I thought, this is, like, the easiest thing I've ever done, <laughs> like, with weight loss. I, I, it just blew my mind because weight loss before was always just this huge struggle. I was always miserable. I never, ever liked any kind of plan where I was losing weight. Um, it was always, there was always something like I, at one point I was taking the tab lift, uh, like when I was a teenager and that like made your heart feel like it was going <laughs> to pound out of his chest and stuff like that. Or, um, you know, it, drinking protein shakes, uh, for the zone diet, I hated the taste and the, it was all chunky. There was just, the, I never liked any kind of plan. So when I finally realized like, Hey, not only did I lose, you know, 65 pounds, but I kept it off and it really felt easy the whole time okay, I'm going to try just, you know, uh, putting this out there. And, and then at that point, that's when I decided like, okay, I want to, I want to lose a few more pounds just, just cause I was, I was still technically like three or four pounds overweight at that point. Um, so, uh, I started losing again and I really, the whole time I thought, I really don't know how far down this plane will take me. I really don't know how, like how, how low, will this plan go for me? And, um, and then sure enough, I'm down, I'm down to that original goal weight that I had. So, um, so yeah, so taking it day by day, I think is key. Um, okay. Uh, Flossie, you asked, when did I start my journey? Okay. So, so uh, in March of 2014, that's when I saw the Facebook photo. Uh, where I, I got tagged in this photo and, 
or actually lots of photos and I just didn't even recognize myself. I really was just like, like, I, I just, I, I, I hadn't seen myself that way before. And, um, I, I was just really, uh, I was embarrassed and, um, but uh, mainly embarrassed because I really didn't realize where I was with my weight and how much in denial I've been. And so, um, so that was the point at which I said, okay, um, I'm going to do something. I started taking progress pictures of myself, but um, I really didn't lose any weight that first year. 2015, I started going to the gym. When I went to the gym that first day, I weighed for the first time in a long time. Like I think since I had been pregnant with my, my third child. And uh, at that point, I was 222 pounds. And so um, uh, 2015, I lost about... 20. I started gaining back though. I was just being really inconsistent. I kept starting things and, and quitting things and I just what and I was in t a huge rush. 2016 that's when I went from like 207 down to 157. Then uh, I maintained for almost a year until uh, September 2017. That's when I went uh, uh, when I made my first video on YouTube and then at that point, I started losing some more weight because I wanted to be in the normal BMI. And so I started losing. I went back to doing OMAD. I'm walking six miles a day and uh, taking a cheat day on Sunday. And that made me lose about a third of a pound a week. Once I got down into the normal BMI, the weight loss really slowed down. Um, but about a third of a pound a week. And now I'm right around 140-ish. So I'm trying to maintain between 140 and 145. So... Uh, hey Steven, I'm uh, glad you're here. Oh, that's interesting. Your uncle taught him? That is so fascinating. Um, Flossie, yes, uh, can I have coffee in the morning and uh, my meal at dinner? Yeah, that's what I do. I, I actually have coffee three times a day during my fasting window. Um, and I have half and half in my coffee. And this is the way I've done it the whole time. Actually, in the beginning of my fasting, um, my coffee had a tablespoon of sugar in it and everyone will say oh you should never do that but that's how i liked my coffee and i eventually weaned myself off of sugar in my coffee uh during the fasting window and now i don't like sugar in my coffee at all but um i did that because i had i really read that you know if you'll not have any kind of sugar in your fasting window it's, it's going to make fasting a lot easier, uh, which I did find to be the case. And I found that I really liked the taste of just cream in my coffee. And it's about two to three tablespoons of half and half. Uh, occasionally I'll use heavy whipping cream if I happen to have it on hand. Uh, but so three times a day I'm doing that though. And there's probably about 60 calories. Somebody, that's a popular question I get. It's like, how many calories in my coffee? There's probably about 60 every time I take a cup of coffee. So, um, I can definitely recommend fasting for controlling inflammation. Very helpful. Uh, thank you for adding that. It's not something I've, I've had a lot of uh, experience with, so thank you. Uh, Madison, oh, well, I'm glad you find it encouraging. Uh, no, Flossie, I'm glad that th this is why I do these lives. Every week I do them because I want uh, to answer questions because I know, like, when I was first starting out, I had a million questions, and there wasn't a whole lot of information back then that I could find, so I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. And also, there's a Facebook group. I forgot to mention it, but um, the Six Miles of Supper uh, Facebook group, it's a great group of encouraging people. Uh, no diet dogma is allowed, so, like, it, you can do whatever you want to do, basically. We have people in there who are doing keto. There are people in there, like me, who do eat all the foods you know um but everybody's super nice and encouraging and i love it um okay so clarissa the easy access to food makes so much sense i'm still grocery shopping <laughs> like a three meal a day or i need to make some uh, changes there yeah like that is that is so true like um snacking and this was something it was in a um documentary uh about fasting and there, there are two really good ones on amazon prime right now um but uh, Dr. Jason Fung was talking about um, uh, how, you know, back in, you know, not, not that long ago, back in like the 60s, the average person would eat three times a day. You know, it would just be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No snacks or anything. And now it has just gotten to where we are constantly, constantly eating. So, um, you know, it, 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 it is definitely a thing 
uh, to the, this interesting. Like, I sometimes I wonder if, like, if you just said three meals a day, no snacks at all, how would that go? I don't know. Uh, I love snacks though. That, it, it's hard. Like, I like the idea of just never having snacks. Like, I, I like occasional, like, you know, having popcorn and stuff like that. Uh, and it's a process, Clarissa. It just is. Um, C. Shives, uh, IFing homeschooling mom to three. Oh, cool. Uh, hardest part of going beyond OMAD, 48 or 72, is missing family dinner. Worried about the message I'm sending on my impressional girls. Any ideas? Well, I just completed a five day fast, and that was a big concern I had. Um, was you know with my kids because I want uh, I want them to have positive body image and I never want to give them the impression that they should ever starve themselves at all and that's kind of a you know it's like the people who have never fasted before a lot of times they kind of try to conflate the two right that oh if you fast you're starving yourself it's a totally different thing um, but. Uh, I will say this, the, the hardest part for me too was uh, the missing out on the fellowship that happens when you share a meal with your family. And because we do that <laughs> every night, uh, it is a, you know, like we all sit down together, no devices, no TV, nothing. We're just sitting there talking and enjoying each other's company. Um, and uh, that was the hardest part for me. Uh, but I was very open and, and clear with like here is why I'm fasting and, and for me it was not for weight loss and I explained that to them you know I said I'm not doing this to try to lose weight or anything this is about you know th these different things like the cancer prevention possibilities and I explained to them like you know I've had my you know uh, my on one side my grandparents both died of cancer and uh, a lot of people on my dad's side have had cancer and so you know I explained it to them uh, in as much detail as I could and answered all their questions and I tried to be very uh, open and honest with them while I was fasting you know like okay you know like do you guys have any questions are you worried at all you know because I didn't want them to think like oh I'm in so much pain or you know because people tend to think that like you must be totally miserable um, and so I was you know uh, I feel like uh, they really understood why I was doing it and I, I think they understood I think they are starting to really understand fasting and I because I, I'm always um, uh, emphasizing the idea of having a good relationship with food not putting too much importance on food and controlling your like learning how to you know eat when you're hungry stop when you're full that kind of thing and um, so that uh, you, do you think that that was pretty much how they received it so um, I feel like that's a positive message to send is um, you know uh, uh, good self-control uh, and that kind of thing so uh, you just did a video today oh yeah I just did a video today that's right <laughs> yeah I just did a video that was released today about intermittent fasting around kids that kind of co that covers all that so uh, Rick lost 48 pounds uh, since June. That is awesome. That is awesome. If you'd ever like to be a success story, oh, and that's something I should mention. If anyone le would like to be featured as a success story, uh, with like doing the interviews that I do, uh, please contact me at Kayla at sixmilestosuffer.com. Or if you know of anybody who you know has lost a lot of weight with intermittent fasting, and you think that they might agree to come on and be interviewed. Um, have them email me. I'm always looking for new guests. Uh, and thank you. If you've already been a guest, thank you. Uh, and you don't have to be at your goal weight. Like if you just feel like, hey, I'm a success story, then I want to feature you. So, okay. Um, let's see, Kim, I think it, uh, I tend to think of each new low weight as a maintenance weight. If my weight bumps up a pound or two, I watch where to go back. If it goes lower, I feel excited. That, you know, that is a really good attitude. And that's pretty similar to kind of my whole uh, take on it from uh, when I started like in uh, September of 2017 to just start to try to lose some more because I caught I thought you know I'm I'm happy where I'm at um, but if I lose more I'll, I'll be fine with that too I really wanted to get into uh, the normal BMI zone but yeah that that kind of and that helps you to kind of relax too right like it, instead of it's like oh when's this weight ever gonna come off it's like okay I'm maintaining I'll probably lose a few more over time Okay, well, oh, I guess we are at an hour now. Um, okay, well, 
Was there any other questions that I, have I missed any? I think I think we got them all right. Yeah. All okay. The questions are handled. Okay. Oh, and Stephen, you said Trucker Randy H. Okay. I will see if I can look him up. Um, and Eric is in here also. He said hello. Oh, hey Eric. Hey Eric. Uh, thanks for joining us. Okay. Well, thank you to everyone out there who has uh, who joined in. Um, I am doing a pay what you want uh, for coaching for the month of December. I know we've got about half the month left. It's whatever you want. Uh, how the frequency, whatever you want. Uh, it's all through Skype. So via voice chat or text-based chat or uh, voice ch uh, video chat and or email if you just want email, which has worked out great for some people. So uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, and uh, please do join the Facebook group. And if you've not checked out my book, uh, The Laidback Guide to Intermittent Fasting, How I Lost 80 Pounds Eating Whatever I Wanted, uh, you can check it out on Amazon or Audible. And uh, thank you very much to all of you who have bought the book and who have left a review, because that goes a long way um, with people who have never seen this channel, uh, but look the, uh, look at the books listing. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to write the review. So thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next week.